Shloimer but Par Ha'eda when it says about the Par Ha'eda. The Par Ha'eda is the one that, that um, when the congregation does a sin based on a psak of the Sanhedrin. So over there it says, Michos HaMachana. It says that it's taken out of the camp. Shein Tzarech Laimar. It wasn't necessary to say that. Shari Kvar Nemar Kasher Tzarech as a Parishan. Because it says, as you burnt the, uh, the first one. And the first one was burnt outside the camp. We're still on 105. We'll get to 106 in a moment. Litin uh, Leimach Neshnia. That's, that, why does it have to say you take it out of the camp? It's coming to tell me that it's taken out of two camps now. Kishem Michos HaMachana Bedeshen. When it says um, that it's taken out of the camp when the when the ashes are taken out, Shein Tzarech Leimar that it doesn't need to say she says Shein Talmud Leimar that it doesn't need to teach us that Shein Kfar Nemar because it already says Al Shefa Chadesh and Yisarif that it's burnt on the place of where the ashes go, which means that you don't have to say that the ashes are taken out of the camp because it already says that what's taken out of the camp is burnt where the ashes go. And that, and that is taken out of the camp. So, and it's burnt where the ashes go. The ashes must be out of the camp. Why does it need to say the ashes are out of the camp? Right? It says everything else is out of the camp where the ashes are. So it doesn't have to say the ashes are out of the camp. So that's coming to tell me, it's coming to give me the, that it's taken out of the third camp. Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon held in the Mishnah that where do they, where does the person that's involved in removing it from the temple, where does he become Tame? The rabbi said he becomes Tame when he leaves the temple. Rav Shimon says he becomes Tame when he begins to burn it. So we said that why does it say outside the camp? It's coming to teach me that he becomes Tame as soon as he leaves the temple. According to Rav Shimon, he doesn't become Tame until he starts burning it. So why does it need to say outside the camp? It does, that's not significant to him. So, he needs it for what it's taught in a brisa. Rebelez, it says, it says over here, outside the camp. What's the here? By the, uh, the offerings of Yom Kippur. And it says over there, by the Paraduma. Uh, just like over here, it's outside the three camps. Just like by the Paraduma, it was outside the three camps. So too, on Yom Kippur, it's taken out outside the three camps. Just like over there, by the Paraduma, was on the east side of Yerushalayim. Also over here, it's to the east of Yerushalayim. That's Reb Shimon's opinion, that the, that the animals, the sacrifices of Yom Kippur, were on the east of Yerushalayim. So, the fact that it says, Michutz Lamachana, is teaching me that it's the same as the Paraduma which is on the east. That's a, we asked, why does it need to say Michos HaMachna according to Reb Shimon if he doesn't become Tameh until he starts burning it? He says, no, it's coming to teach me what side outside the camp, because you have all four sides. Mm-hmm. To teach me that it's on the east. The problem is the Rabbanon used that to teach me that he becomes Tameh when he leaves. According to the Rabbanon, where, what side do you burn it? Kedetanya was taught in a b'raise, Hechen Esrafen, where they burn? Litzfein Yerushalayim to the north. They didn't even hold that it was burnt to the east. Why is it to the north? Because the sacrifices, the chatas, is always done on the north. On the north of the courtyard. North of the temple. Here it's the north of Yerushalayim. So what would uh, the other opinion say? Was it Rabbi Elezer? Rabbi Shimon. I'm Rabbi Shimon. What would he say? Quoting Rabbi Elezer. He holds that it's uh, he said that that it's it's east. Uh, that it's to the east, yeah. Okay. But there's no proof from the Pusik to say well, it's right? In other words, there's no proof. No. Okay. And it's done the north of Yerushalayim, outside the three camps. Rabbi Yaisi Aglili Yemer, Rabbi Yaisi Aglili Yemer, Rabbi Rabbi Yaisi Aglili says that it's burnt on the base Adeshen, where the ashes are. That means that you need to have ashes there before you start the burning. Amar Rav, Aman Tana, the Polagala, the Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, who argues on Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov. Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov argues on it. Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov, we said, is, doesn't say a lot, but his, um, the halacha is like him. Over here it doesn't tell me that the halacha is like him, actually. The note says that the halacha would be like Rabbi Yaisi Agli. The, you know how to tell that? There's a, there's, in, in the text, 
you have the little um, Aleph Beis Gimel Dalit without a with, without a, um, a parentheses or a brackets next to it. That those little letters in the actual text, they send you to the Ein Mishpat in their mitzvah, which is on the outer part of the, the page. And that that's a reference to the Rambam in, in the Shulchan Aruch. Where to find it there? So officially. If you have the the letter is on, there's a machlokes. The letter is on one opinion, so that means that the halacha is like that opinion. That's official. That's the easy way without looking it up. It's not 100 percent accurate. Sometimes you look it up and it's really it's just quoting the whole thing. Okay, so Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov says the Tanya al Shefa Chadeshin, Yisarif Sheishem Deshin. First opinion holds that there needs to be ashes there before you start burning it. Ashes from the mizbeach. Where did they put all the ashes from the mizbeach? You know, after you make a barbecue. Where do you put the ashes? You throw it on the floor. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably good for the compost. <laughs> so, um, so uh, where did they do the ashes from the altar? They would take it outside and they would put it on this place. And then afterwards, if they had to, one of these sacrifices, they would put it over there. But there needed to be ashes from the altar there first. Rabbi Lozab and Yaakov Eimer, Shiei Mekoymei Meshupach. It says, Al Shefa Chadesh. And what it means to tell me is that it needs to be on an incline. It has to be burnt on an incline, that the, 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 the ground level needs to be on an incline. Shefech means it needs to pour. Amalei Abaya. So we see that Rabbi Yossi Aglili, uh, Rabbi Lezab and Yaakov argues on Rabbi Yossi Aglili. He says that it needs to be ashes there first. Rabbi Yossi, uh, uh, Rabbi Yossi Aglili says it needs to be ashes first. Rabbi Lezab and Yaakov says it needs to be on an incline. Uh, Abaya says, Dilma mekam meshubach pli. How do you know that Rabbi Lezab and Yaakov holds that you don't need ashes there? Maybe Rabbi Lezab ben Yaakov is adding that it needs to be an incline plus ashes. You don't know that he's arguing on, on him. Maybe he, he holds like him plus. That another uh, uh, restriction there, another uh, uh, qualification. Tanur Rabban and the rabbis taught. Asoyref, the one that burns it, mitami begodim. Oh, this is so complicated. The, 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 um, I have to read it from, from the other one. Let's see if this works better. The, 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 the editor, the Shittim uh, Bestest, takes words out of here. The one that burns it, his clothing become tummy. Hasayref, the one that burns it, metame begadim, he becomes tummy. V'loi hametis esa'ar, but not the one that lights it. Now skip the words, metame begadim. V'loi hamasada esa'maracha, and not the one that organizes it. Mitame begadim. Will his clothing become tummy? Okay, that's we're past that. So, Be'izu Sayref, who's the one that burns? What is considered the one that burns it? Hamasayeh b'shas asreifa. Anyone that's helping while it's being burned. So lighting it, lighting the fire, I guess, or bringing the torch or whatever it was used, that's not considered burning. It only someone that's actually burning the actual, um, uh, the actual animal. Yachalach mishenas away from mitame begadim. Maybe even after it, it turns into ash. The one that still continues to burn the ash is metame, his clothing become tummy. Only them, not the uh, not while it still burns after it, there's already after it's already ash. That they are the animals themselves will be make the clothing impure. But if the uh, the meat is already dissolved. Then his clothing won't become tummy. Might be now. What's the difference between Reb Shimon and the first opinion? He says the but the meat is dissolved, and um, the first opinion says ash. If it's scorched, but it's not ash, according to Reb Shimon, that's already considered that it's not metame anymore, because it's that's considered that it's dissolved. It's a funny word that it says nitach. It's translated as dissolved. But, um, but but it's not ash yet. It's not ash yet, so according to the other rabbis, it will still make the anyone that's involved in the burning, their clothing will become tummy. We'll get back to this. Next chapter. Someone that slaughters the sacrifice outside the temple talking about at the time when the temple existed or at least the Mishkan existed when you weren't allowed to do this uh, there were times when you were allowed to with the, when there was no temple 
in, in between the the, um, the Mishkan and the in the temple, you were allowed to slaughter sacrifices on private <coughs> altars. So there's two prohibitions. What about between? I'm sorry. Between the two temples? Yeah. No. Once the temple was built, then it's forbidden. So people between the two. What did people no, do? No, they weren't. They couldn't. They could not bring sacrifices. They died. The um, there's two prohibitions: slaughtering and then offering it on the on an altar. Rabbi Aglili says, "Shachat bifnim." Someone slaughters it in the temple. The hella bachutz. He takes the sacrifice outside the temple and he offers it up there. So then he's chayet. But however, shachat bachutz the hella bachutz. If it was slaughtered outside, and then it was brought up outside, he's potter, he's exempt. Shlei helel a davar pasal, because he offered an offering that was invalid. Why was it invalid? Because it was slaughtered outside the temple. So the one that brings it up on, on an altar, he's bringing up an invalid sacrifice. He didn't, uh, that's not considered a sacrifice. talking about that someone else did the slaughtering. It has to be, because or else he would be chayev. The punishment for this is karis. It's chayev karis, which is excision. His soul is cut off from the community. And he dies young. And, um, Rabbi, I'm sorry, can I ask you a question? The beginning of the mission says, it's talking about when there's no base on right? No, I'm talking about when there is a base on he's chayev. Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Right, okay, That's so. why he's chayev. Oh, so he was chayv because he did it outside the base of Right. He's chayv on l'shchiti and he's chayv on Right. Rabbi Yisya Glili says that if you shecht it outside, then you would be chayv for shechting it outside, fine. But if someone else shechted it outside, and then the, another person comes and brings it up on an altar outside the temple, so that person is bringing up an invalid sacrifice on the altar. That's not considered a sacrifice, it's invalid. So he would be Pater. Mm-hmm. They responded to him, mm-hmm. So when do you think he's going to be Chayev for bringing it up on, the, on an altar? We have a verse in the Torah that says you're obligated, a person is Chayev, Karas, if he brings it up on an altar. When would that happen? According to him, only if you slaughter it inside the temple, and then you bring it outside the temple because it's valid. So they tell him, let me ask you, if you take a sacrifice from the temple and you bring it outside, is it still valid? No, mm-hmm. it becomes invalid when you take it out. Mm-hmm. So how will you ever have bringing a sacrifice up on an altar that would be, in your, in your eyes, considered a valid sacrifice that he would, should be high of karis? You slaughter it inside the temple, when you take it out, you're, you're, uh, you're, you invalidate it just by removing it. Okay, mm. that's the uh, their response back. We don't see what Rabbi Yossi's response over here. Atami she'achal, bein kodesh tami, bein kodesh tari. This is really not relevant to our discussion, but because it's uh, another machlekas of Rabbi Yossi Aglili and the Chachamim, so we bring it here as well. Again, Mishnayos were memorized, so the the association is very important in the Mishnayos. Uh, sometimes it's associated with numbers. Sometimes it's associated with. Uh, rabbis' names, who said it, and sometimes this topic. Okay, so someone that's tummy that he eats uh, from a sacrifice. Now, whether the sacrifice was itself tummy or whether the sacrifice was pure, he's chayyim. Rabbi Yisaglili, Amen. Rabbi Yisaglili says no. Someone that's tummy, she'achal tar, he's then he's chayyim. If he eats from a pure sacrifice, then he's really doing the wrong thing. Your tummy don't eat from the sacrifice. But how, then he's chayev, chayev karis. But tami she'achal tami. But if the sacrifice was impure, so it was already had a problem, so then he's pater. Shleiachal al davar tami. He ate something that was tami anyway. Amrulai, the rabbi said back to him, af tami she'achal asatar. Even someone that's tami that eats something that's pure, kiven shenaga by timo. Once he touches it, he makes it tami. So uh, it's a similar sort of claim that they have to him. How do you ever have someone tummy eating eating food, eating uh, eating uh, sacrifice? According to you, 
It's never going to be pure. Wait, so according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili... Only if the sacrifice is pure. But it's not pure because he's Because once he touches it, he makes it tummy. Mm -hmm. Let's see someone that's pure that eats a sacrifice that's tummy. Then he's potter. He's potter from karis. It's it's a prohibition. You're not supposed to eat a sacrifice that's tummy, but he's potter from karis. Only uh, obligation, the only uh, time that there's a strict punishment of karis is when a person himself is tummy. And then he goes ahead and he eats from a sacrifice. That's a very strict prohibition. But someone that's pure, that eats from a sacrifice that became tummy, that's a, a negative prohibition, but it's not karis. Bishlema, the Gemara says like this, Bishlema hala, it works out well when it comes to bringing up a sacrifice on an altar outside the temple. So we have over there, oh, everything is in place. Ksiv ainish, ksiv ashara. The Torah tells me the punishment. The punishment is either karis, if he does it on purpose, or achatas, if he did it by mistake. Mistake would mean he forgot the laws. Or maybe he thought he was in the temple. I don't know if that's possible. Um, uh, so, and, and if he does it by mistake, then he has to bring a, uh, a chatas. Karas or chatas. So we have both in over there. We have the punishment and we have the prohibition. It says do not, and it also says what happens if he does. <coughs> he has to bring a chatas and he has karas? No. If it's by mistake, it's a chatas. If it's on purpose, it's karas. Right. So, Bishlema Halak Sivanesh Ksiv Asara. Ainesh, what is the punishment? Ksiv El Pesach El Mayed La Yivieno. Oh, it's edited over here, which is good. It says, he did not bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting, and his soul will be cut off. That's the verse. Asara, where, where does it say the violation? Ksiv, Isham Alacha, be careful. Lest, Pantalo Lesecha, lest you bring your sacrifices. Um, uh, on any place that you that you that you see, okay. The Chihad Rav Avin Amar Rabbi similar to what Rabbi Avin says, name Rabbi Lazar. Kol Makim Shnebar Hishamer Pen Vaal anywhere where it says in the Torah, lest uh, be cautious and do not. Eina Yella Loisase. That means that it's a negative prohibition. So we have that means because it says be careful. That means that's similar to saying do not. El however, offering a sacrifice, not offering, slaughtering the sacrifice outside the temple. Bish it works out well. The punishment, I know the punishment. He did not bring it to the tent of meeting. His soul will be cut off. El but it doesn't say the violation. It only says the punishment. It doesn't say the violation. We're supposed to have the violation and the punishment. Now, later on, the Gemara is going to discuss that we can figure out that there's a a violation, but it's supposed to say the, the prohibition before it says, uh, as well as the uh, punishment. The Pasuk says, quotes a Pasuk, that you will not sacrifice any more uh, to the idols or to the demons, um, to other gods. So that's the, that we're saying the word zevach, you will not sacrifice, that's referring to the shechita. So the Gemara responds that we do have a Pasuk. The Gemara says, Hi, mi bayle, this Pasuk is needed, like the Rabbi Lazar, Damar, it's needed for what Rabbi Lazar says. How do you know that someone that sacrifices an animal to Mercury? Merkulis was a, uh, one of the idols. It was on the, on the, uh, on the roads, on the, um, the, the crossroads. They would put three rocks, and they would have like a, two on the bottom and one on top, and that was um, idols for travelers that were passing by. You, they would throw a rock at it, and that, would, that was the way of serving it. Now, we see it still sometimes in, on, on roads. They have, but they put it there for um, so no one rams into the buildings. You know, those people, <laughs> they, you, know the, you know what I'm talking about? It's like yeah. the deco de decorative ramparts. But I, I think it's um, it was probably you know the, it's in their mind from the old Roman uh, interesting thing. Hmm. So I don't know what the the uh, symbol of um, the 
Olympics. You know, you have like two, and then the one on top. I don't know what that's. What mean, the circles? You talking about? The circles. Yeah, I don't know where that's from, but it was. We're talk, it's similar to that. It was like two on the bottom and one on top, and then it would get larger. It would pile up larger. So, yeah. so the, the 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 prohibition is you're not allowed to serve an idol the way that the idol is served, but. There were certain things that if, you, uh, that if you did it for an idol, even if it was not the way, like if you threw a rock at any idol, that would not be a prohibition. It's only the mercury, the marculus, mm-hmm. that that was the way that it was served. Mm-hmm. So, so um, but let's say someone slaughters a sacrifice to mercury. So slaughtering a sacrifice is a type of worship that could be done to any idol, and it's considered a prohibition of worship. That's considered worshiping an idol. How do we know that that's true? So it says that you will not sacrifice anymore. That, how do we know that someone that sacrificing the animal to Mercury that is chayv the ksiv leyuz b'chuyd the sivchayim? You will not sacrifice anymore your your um, your offerings to the idols. If it's not, if I don't need it for for an idol, that that's the way that it was worshipped. The ksiv echayavdu, because I have another verse that said that prohibits that. So tenei uin shleik kedarka. So then we'll have to say that that's teaching me that even if this is not the way that this idol is normally served, it's still a prohibition. So the, our question here is, how do you know that you're not allowed to slaughter a sacrifice outside the temple? You quoted a verse that that verse is being used to tell me that I can't slaughter a sacrifice to an idol, that that's not the way that it's served. Uh, that verse is already used up. There's two words in that. It says you will not sacrifice, and you will not sacrifice anymore. So because those two words are there, one of them is teaching me that I can't sacrifice to the idol, even if it's not the way of worship, and one is teaching me that I can't sacrifice outside the temple. <coughs> sacrifice, for specifically, the shechita. But we said, I still need that verse for something else. He's saying it's extra. Adkan, who medaber bekachim shektishim b'shasis rabamis, rekpim b'shasis rabamis. I have a brisa that says like this, that the Pasuk was talking about sacrifices that were sanctified at the time when you were not allowed to bring on a private altar. Why? Because the temple was built. And then you brought it also at the time that it was, that it was prohibited because the temple was built. Shari Yon over there, it says the prohibition. You did not bring it to the tent of meeting. Uh, the, the, that's the punishment. The, the soul was be cut off. Ashara, the prohibition, the Ksivi Shamalacha Pentala Alisecha, that you will that be careful lest you bring your sacrifices. Mikan Veilach, but but further of uh, the the other Pasak of La Yizbahu, the Pasak that we're trying to use to tell me about the slaughtering, that's teaching me. Let's say the temple was built and people that were there at that time had sacrifices that were designated, that were sanctified, before the temple was built. <coughs> so before the temple went up, <coughs> those sacrifices could have been, could have been brought, oh, thank you, Um, that, that it could have been uh, that, that um, those sacrifices could have been brought up on the uh, before the temple was built on a private altar. But now the temple was built, so I need a special prohibition to tell me that that, uh, uh, that I don't need a, a, I already know if the temple was there and the sacrifices were designated. And then you brought them on, a, on an altar that was outside. I know that already. That was the first verse, the first two verses. But let's say you were allowed to bring it because you designated before the temple was built. And now the temple was built. So I, now I need a verse to tell me. Those sacrifices that I allowed you to bring Al Asada on the face of the field, which means on your private altars. Laimalach, this is teaching you Bamis, someone that sacrifices it at the time that the private altars are prohibited, Malalov the Torah considers it Kilohikar Al Asada. It's as if you brought it uh, 
to, to the idols. That's what it means to say. As if you brought it, you brought it outside the temple. It's as if you brought sacrifice to the, to the idols, even though you were bringing it for God. But because it was outside the temple and there was a time that it was prohibited, that's it's as if. Ve'viyum la Hashem, you should bring them to Hashem to the temple. Zumitzvah sase. This is the positive command. Leisaseminayin. What's the negative command? Talmud leimer v'leyiz b'chuvayd. You shall not slaughter any more. Yochel yeyanosh karis. Maybe there is karis also for this type of sacrifice, which was allowed to be brought outside the temple because it was designated before, but then the temple was built, then it became prohibited. No, only if it was designated after the temple was built will there be karis. The problem is, this well, is a nice long it, question. If it, let's, say, let's say it was before they built the base of Mikdash and you designated something. Right. So and then the temple problem. was built. Right. But then the temple was built, and then you continued to sacrifice it outside the temple. Doesn't make a difference. So it's a prohibition, but there's no karas. That's what we're learning here. What would you have to do in a situation like that? You have to bring a, 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 a malchus. Malchus Ma- or. You have to bring um, hatas, would you? I think it's malchus. Oh. If he was warned. Um, yeah, it's a problem. People don't accept new situations. No, so it happens like in every uh, every change. It's like, oh no, I was always allowed to do this. Mm-hmm. So no, 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 now it's different. Right. <clears throat> but our problem here is, is that we don't have a violation, a, uh, a prohibition in the Torah for slaughtering. We only have uh, for offering it up, and we only have the punishment for slaughtering. We're looking for the verse that says you're not allowed to. We quoted a verse, we said that verse is telling me that you're not allowed to offer a sacrifice that was already designated. But you don't have an actual prohibition for for um, for slaughtering. Ella Omar, who is this? Abaya. It says Rebovin. It's adjusted by the Bach to Abaya. He adjusts it. And then he also has a source for it. He quotes the Yalka that, that quotes that it's really a Baya. Kalvachimer says, I have a Kalvachimer. We don't really need a, a verse. Ma be makim shlaya onash. Hizer. Makim sh onash in a din shihizer. Those sacrifices that you were allowed to sacrifice outside the temple because the temple was not built yet. And then the temple was built. So we said that there's no punishment. Right? We said that there was no punishment. It was just a, a prohibition. So if by a sacrifice where there's no punishment, which are those that were those intermediate ones, it was designated at an appropriate time, but then it was offered, so there's only a prohibition, but there's no punishment. For, the, for those that there is a punishment, for sure there's a prohibition. If where there's no punishment, the Torah prohibits it, and the Torah said the violation, if there is a punishment, of course there's a, a prohibition. Amalei Ravina, it must be a by uh, Ravina, the, it says Ravashi, La Abaya. The Ravina says to Abaya, <coughs> Im Cain, if so, if you think that when the Torah does not need to say the prohibition, it, it's not going to say it. So, Im Cain, la yemer lav bechelev. Don't say that forbidden fats are prohibited. V'tesi kal v'chaymer min avela. I'll know it automatically from an avela, which is a dead animal. Ma avela, just like by an avela, shloyonash. Where there is no, if someone eats a dead animal, an animal that wasn't shechted, there's no karis there. But nevertheless, his it. The Torah says you're not allowed to eat it. It wasn't shechted. Chelev, where there's karis, the forbidden fats. Sha'anash, there's a punishment there. In din shehizer, of course it's prohibited. So why do you have to say don't eat it? Kal chelev, leisa chelev, whatever, it says don't eat it. So if, if I can learn out the, the, the violation, because 
it says the punishment, so why does it have to say the violation? Asla kami de Rava. Ravina came to Rava, Amalei. Minavela nami layasya. One second, I'm supposed to take out that word. Yeah, minavela layasya. You can't learn from nevela. Nevela is different. Dikla mifrach. You could always ask, man, le nevela shkin matame. Nevela is different than forbidden paths. Nevela makes a, a person tame if he touches it. So you can't say that because over there it says a prohibition, so also uh, it doesn't need to say the prohibition by, by chela. Nevela is much stricter. It makes tame. So it says mishratzim tameim. Maybe you could learn from shratzim tameim that over there it says... Um, the prohibition. There's no karis over there. No, no, you can't learn from that because a sheretz, there's these creeping uh, creatures that are that make a person tummy, whatever weasels or whatever they are, the things that make a per- lizards that make a person tummy when they're dead. And he said, but they're matame even if it's the smallest amount. So that's strict. You can't learn that that there's a that because over there it says a violation, so too other places it, 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 the, Im, it, the violation would be implied from the punishment. What about Mishratzim Tahirim? Other, other like uh, insects that are in the lettuce and that. Um, over there it doesn't make impure. And over there it doesn't say the punishment. It only has the prohibition. And so if it says the prohibition there, so I'll learn a Kalva to other places that where it says the punishment. No, by those insects, even if they're tiny, they're still prohibited. Wait, it says malishratim tahirim. Yeah, shratim tahirim means the ones that there's eight shratim that make a person tummy if they touch them. These are all the other creeping things that it says you're not allowed to eat them. But it's but you're still tar. But you're still tar. But you're not allowed to eat them. But he says one second you can't learn from there because those are less than a kazayas. You can't learn over to uh, Hela or Nevela or whatever. It says, what about me, Arlo, Klaya Kerem? You learn from Arlo and Klaya Kerem that over there, it says the punishment, it, sa- it says the prohibition. And if it says the prohibition there, even though there's no karis, and someone eats Arlo, or Klaya Kerem, or forbidden mixtures in a vineyard, so that will teach me that anywhere else, where there is a punishment, for sure the prohibition is there. There's no one second. Those are prohibited to having benefit from them. Arla, the first three years of a tree, and forbidden mixtures in a vineyard. You can't have benefit. So you can't learn from there. So it says, what about Mishvias from, from the Shemitah year? Mala Shvias came to Fesas Domain. No, that's very strict because if you exchange it for something, the new thing that you exchanged it for.